Good morning, beautiful friends. I'm back in my vehicle. I also recognize that I'm back wearing black. I've been wearing black a lot lately. So I'm on my way to the Tesla service center, unfortunately. So we're a month out from moving and I'm a couple days out from selling my car. Private party is the way to go, by the way. Private party is the way to go. I'll tell you the story about that nonsense too, because there's always, there's always a challenge, right? Very rarely do things just unfold perfectly smoothly. We're adults. We've got a deal. But like when you're, when you have a time limit, it seems like you get hit with the craziest of challenges. Anyway, I digress. Last weekend, we were going to a friend's birthday party and they live in a golf community. So we were driving by a golf course and a very terrible golfer completely missed. I don't even know where he was aiming, but the golf ball went through our windshield, not through it. It bounced. We were driving and I was like, what is that? Straight through the windshield, not through hit the windshield, destroyed the windshield days, hours before I'm supposed to sell this vehicle. So I am headed to Tesla to replace, oh, my, my comprehensive deductible is a thousand dollars too. So it's so much fun. We got the golfer's information. I'm really hoping his integrity is intact and that he doesn't faint when he realizes how much it costs to replace a Tesla windshield. So we shall see. Moving is expensive. I told you guys this. I've, I've warned you. So I had to laugh. It was actually rather funny. I've had to replace a windshield once before this. It was two years ago rocks flew up from trucks. There's a lot of semis that drive on our highway where I live. And so I thought in my head after I replaced it the first time that I lowered my comprehensive to 500 because I was like, this is going to happen again shortly. Wasn't expecting a golf ball. I'll end the tangent on this. The funny thing about this particular incident with a golf ball is that earlier that morning, we had been driving to a different town to pick up meat from a butcher shop. And there was a crap ton of traffic and we're like, what's going on? Once we got to the point where the incident was, we realized that a semi truck had underestimated how tall the truck was and it hit the overpass. So a crap ton of like concrete chunks fell into a lane and there was a CHP officer moving the chunks off to the shoulder. And I was like, oh, thank goodness, Mike, could you imagine like being behind that semi and having those chunks fall, like how dangerous for one, but for two, like your car, like terrible timing, right? So I made a note. I was like, oh, just in case like little pieces fall off, make sure I'm in the other lane. Every time I pass that overpass wasn't, but two hours later, this golf ball hit this windshield. It was like, no, you're going to get yours. You're going to get yours. All right, guys, um, I'll catch you up on all of the rest of the happenings a little bit later. Let me get this car situated. I'll see you soon. So we are two days post Tesla service and I have a really interesting story that I want to share with you guys. I went to drop off my car, um, went to the counter, gave them my key. They like pull up my account and they're like, yeah, you have a thousand dollar comprehensive deductible. So you'll pay us when we replace the windshield and then you can be on your merry way. Now they had said, we should be able to have your windshield done by the end of today, which was 5 p.m. And I'm like, okay, I was kind of hoping it was gonna be done sooner because I don't live in the town. I didn't have a car. We had things to do, places to go. So <laughs> I have my friend pick me up. We go out to lunch, we have a great time. And then I said, you know what? I'm not gonna stick around in this town. Like it's too long of a day. So I call the service center and I say, hey, is there a way for me to pick up my car after you guys close because I have errands I have to run, yada, yada. I was like, can I pay through the app? They're like, yes, you can pay everything. It'll give you the invoice and you can pick up your car even after we close, we'll just lock your key inside of the car. I'm like, okay, great, thank you. About an hour later, I get a call from Tesla and a message in app that says your car's ready. When I go in the app, it says, you can pick up your car, you are not responsible for payment, everything's good, come come get it, you're complete. It would not show me an invoice, it didn't show me like a total charge. I was like, is 
is this for real? Like, how am I going to just going to get to go pick up my car and not pay? Granted, the golfer was supposed to pick up this tab, but I, there's a part of me that's like, man, what if he ghosts us and we're on the hook for this thing? So I screenshot this app. I will like put it here. It literally says you are not responsible for payment. And I have Tesla insurance. I filed the claim through this app. So it's not like my insurance company doesn't know. It's not like they're going to, they can't, Insurance companies can't just bill you later for something. It was like, you're complete. Come get your car. I was like, I'm not about to ask twice. I got my car. I got on my merry way. I have not gotten a phone call. I have not seen anything change in the app. It just says you're complete. And I said to Mike, how is this, how is this a thing? And he's like, can you just believe that maybe someone's incompetence can actually benefit us sometimes? Because it's obvious that people's incompetence can cost us sometimes. So why couldn't it give us the benefit? I'm like, that's such a beautiful point. And it is hard. <laughs> it's rather hard to believe. <laughs> I'm gonna be leaving the house shortly to go hang out with some of my best friends. Um, I'm saying goodbye to people. It's bittersweet. I'm excited to get quality time in with my girls, but it's likely the last time that the four of us will be together. And we have so much to celebrate. My best friend is pregnant. Um, another best friend just had a birthday pass. And another best friend is literally delivering her baby any day now. So um, it's just going to be a great experience. So I'll show you guys the little baby basket I put together for my bestie because I will already be out of the country when she's having her baby shower. So I'm going to gift it to her now, celebrate her now. I'll show you guys what we got. I'm actually really proud of myself because her registry just came up and she doesn't have any of these items in her registry. So she had kind of like a feeding gap, which worked out beautifully for me. <laughs> so we've got the finger toothbrush. We've got um, the little tiny spoons. So when a little man gets to be around the six month mark, we've got like the tiny bowl from Easy Peasy and also like the starter cup that's weighted, which is awesome. We've got like a little cute onesie, lots of blankets for outdoor play at summertime. This is a breastfeeding cover. It also doubles as like a car seat um, cover, which I love. Oh, I have to show you guys these because she has a Winnie the Pooh theme. I had, I ordered these on Etsy and they're so stinking cute, like zero to three month little boots. I cannot. And then I'm not going to open this, but there's a really cute linen hat inside of here that I found from Findings Market, which is an adorable shop in Ventura. And then another blanket back here and a swaddle. I love it. I love you. That was a sweet <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's like the the Winnie the Pooh bear. Yes. <laughs> okay, you got a little tiny spoon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's perfect. Yes, I feel like you had a spoon. gap on your feeding on stuff. Exactly, mm -hmm. for sure. That's a tooth, silicone oh, toothbrush. So that's nice. like when their newborns just clean their gums. Mm -hmm. oh, you just put that in your, that's yeah. That's smart. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's like a little heart. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> That's why you have to protect them. Yes, you gotta protect the little scalpy. I love it. <laughs> okay, we're doing a little driving diary. This is one of my last drives in this car. She is going to a new owner today, EVE Everest, as she was named. Um, we were actually just driving down the street to get her washed and the car wash here in town is closed today, maybe because it's 90 freaking degrees. So we got to go out <coughs> a bit further, but yeah, man, this is it. This is like the last time I'm driving her and Mike and I were talking about how, even though we feel like we have outgrown this car and it's not even like we're getting a new car we're selling our cars but we were ready to say goodbye to her it's still bittersweet because i wanted a tesla for so long for so many years i dreamed about the day that i would be able to afford a tesla 
And I remember when I brought this car home the first night, <laughs> I partied in this car in my garage. Like the kids were asleep. I got myself a glass of wine or two and I played all my favorite songs on this sound system. It sounded so good. I was so happy. I was in my element. You could not tell me anything. And I remember crying tears of joy, being so happy to have accomplished the goal of owning a Tesla. So I will always remember that feeling and I will always hold gratitude for things that I really desire, truly desire and work hard to get and eventually accomplish. And I also hold with deep reverence the fact that we as humans are always growing, changing, evolving, and so are our desires. And it's okay to have had your time with something or even someone and be grateful for everything it brought you, all the lessons, all the joy, all the everything, um, and still feel a little bit of sadness releasing it. So that's where I'm at with this. I'm grateful it has been such a great car for us. Um, I did not bring Naya. I was like, did I bring Naya home from the hospital in this car? I did not. But nonetheless, it's been an amazing car to us. We have road tripped to Oregon once in this car, once in Mike's truck. We've gone up to seemingly all over the freaking world in this car. And um, it has been fantastic. 90,000 miles in this car and really not a problem. car is gone. I definitely had my emotions about it. We got her all cleaned up and it's just like, dang, you're such a good looking vehicle and I'm going to miss you. We've had some crazy moments. Um, I had Mike take a video. I was like, could you take a video of it? Like I was with Naya and he was with the car and he sent me this video. I'm just going to insert the shot because she'd be looking real fine. But listen, I'm so happy with who's getting this car. It's this really sweet young man. He is actually from Portugal and he speaks five different languages and he was just so considerate, so excited to have this car. And he had texted us after he took the car and he said, I love it. I'm going to take such great care of it. I'd love to stay in contact with you guys. I'm so happy that you're getting to travel with your family. So it just felt right. You just love when that happens. But I was talking with a friend and we were saying, listen, when you sell your car, especially when you don't live in a city, that is the initiation of a trust fall. Like this is the first time I am releasing a vehicle and not bringing one home. And it feels like such a commitment to this traveling sabbatical that we're doing. It's like, all right, it's for real. We are rearranging our lives to get by on one vehicle for the next few weeks, which is, we'll figure it out, but it's definitely already had some challenges. You have to, you definitely have to get a little bit more creative when things are not necessarily in walking distance. Uh, but we also went and paid off Mike's truck so he can begin the process of listing his truck for sale too. So countdown is officially on and I'll catch you guys in the next update.